Sulcha means reconciliation. So we're here just outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. Now most of the news you see coming from this region is about land, politics, and violence. What you don't get are stories about real people looking for viable solutions to the social and political problems that they face. We made this pod to show you a different side of the story. One about dialogue. And how effective it actually is on the current situation. For three days and nights, the Latrun Monastery, lying just outside Jerusalem, became home to a grassroots peace gathering named Sulha. Thousands of Jews, Muslims, and Christians partook in events aimed at planting the seeds of peace through interpersonal dialogue. Sulcha means reconciliation. It means forgiveness. It's about creating conditions for just real people from this vicinity to have an encounter where they can meet and learn about each other and have council circles and speak with each other. And a lot of it is about listening to each other. And how can I be a part of the solution? How can I, you know, put in my two cents? The worst of the problem is me and you, we're living differently, cannot live together. This is a bigger problem. We started with 100 people in 2001, we now count with a few thousand. We want to really empower the people to understand that peace is not an ideology, peace is a way of life. We don't have to go to Washington DC or to Taba or to Oslo. We want everyone to come to here, to know who we are and how we can live together. We are we had bereaved families for him. We have combatants for peace that laid down their weapons to work for peace. My Palestinian identity, today I'm carrying both sides on my shoulder. My name is Ali Abawad. In 2000, I lost my brother. He has been killed by an Israeli soldier. For me, my brother worth the whole world. So how many Israelis shall I kill to feel better? So I'm a settler. I live in a settlement called Tekoa, and yet I'm a peace activist. Sometimes I feel that saying uh, peace activists or, or I'm a settler, sometimes it doesn't catch the complexity of what it means to live in this land. When we stop competing about who suffers more, about who has the monopoly of suffering, on who started this, we're not going to get anywhere. we got to cry the pain of the other. Ten miles away on the streets of Jerusalem, local Jews and Muslims were not as optimistic about the effectiveness of dialogue. The conflict of the Middle East is not based on individuals who meet and uh, discuss, discuss their histories, their stories. The main problem are uh, in fanatics who but really, I don't think they want, they, don't, they don't want the peace. You can become really good friends, but when uh, a bomb explodes, then it's really hard for you to set aside all the differences and concentrate in the personal dialogue. So the extremists on both sides of the, of the country, like from the side of the Jews and from the side of the Palestinians, are not capable of, of reaching or making peace together. <laughs> I was participating in some sort of a, something that you kind of described and people did not stay in touch after. It was previous to the second intifada and the second intifada, you know, it's really, really hard. I don't know, we're enemies, I guess. <laughs>